Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. So we just completed a wiring rescue on Mark's Street Glide. It was a brand new bike. He took it to another shop. They, uh, he blew the back speakers twice. Twice they covered under warranty. But he just got tired of going back and forth because the bike never sounded quite right to him. And he knew he had used all good equipment. So he's running Rockford DSP, Rockford Amplifier, Hertz speakers in the fairing and Hertz speakers in the lids. So he was getting water in his bags and he knew the bike didn't sound the way it was supposed to sound. And then he had speakers cutting out and distortion high volumes. Uh, the shop looked at the bike two or three times. I think it was four times actually, and they couldn't get it right. So finally he got fed up and he brought the bike to us. So the first thing that we didn't understand is they charged him to do the install then when he realized he couldn't take the saddlebags off because they just ran the wire to the speaker through the saddlebag and up to the fairing with no quick disconnect. When he went back, they actually charged him $150 to add quick disconnects to the job that they had originally done. So the, I guess their standard install does not include you being able to take your saddlebags off so you can service the motorcycle. That does make sense. Then the other crazy part to me is Rockford literally is one of the first companies to come out for, with products specifically for motorcycles. So they chose to use the Rockford motorcycle amplifier and they chose to use the Rockford DSP. They did not use the Rockford plug and play harness. Rockford makes an amplifier install kit for this setup. The install kit is $200 and it includes a mounting bracket for the amplifier, a plug and play harness that plugs directly into the back of the radio and goes into the amplifier, no splicing, no cutting. They did not use this harness. The Rockford harness comes with 100% oxygen-free copper wire for power and ground and speaker wires. They used aluminum wire for the power and ground. And on top of that, they didn't have enough ground wire. So they ran red wire for the positive and red wire for the ground, and then just put a bunch of tape on the ground wire. Then, since they didn't use a T-harness, they had to splice power for the DSP into the power harness of the amplifier. Then the output of the amplifier, they cut his factory speaker plugs going to the speaker pods and they ran those. So they hacked up the factory harness. They didn't use, they ran drywall self-tapping screws into the amp mounting plate from factory because they didn't use the Rockford mounting plate. So I, I don't understand if you're gonna use Rockford product, one of the reasons you use Rockford product is so you can make it 100% plug and play. And then even if you don't use the Rockford harness, the speaker plug connectors are only $20. So you could unplug the factory ones, use the $20 connectors, solder them onto the amplifier and made it plug and play. But uh, okay, they didn't remove the gas tank and some shops don't, that's fine. But instead of following the factory harness down, they ran the wire over the motor and it actually started burning in two spots where it came in contact with the motor. Now, the reason this is a huge issue is the Rockford amp only requires a 50 or 60 amp fuse. They put a 200 amp fuse on the harness. So if the harness had grounded out on the motor was melting, the fuse wouldn't have blown right away because it's four times bigger than the amplifier calls for, which doesn't make sense. Uh, then when we got to the bags, these are factory Harley lids. So they're set up for five by sevens. They, instead of using the five by seven to six fine adapter made by our American hard bags, they ground the inside of the lid, chopped up the inside of the lid and used a speaker spacer, spaced it out. And then the, since it's a five by seven hole, the mounting bolts are in a five by seven inch configuration to mount the adapter in place. Since they use a six mine spacer, obviously the spacer is bigger than the mounting hole configuration. So there's a giant gap in the bottom. So they used a few self-tapping screws and then they filled the bottom with glue to take up the extra two inches between the seven inch adapter and the nine inch speaker that they were gonna use. So obviously there was water in the bags and then there was nothing to screw into for the third screw. So they just jammed a speed clip underneath that's just hanging out in midair. Um, so obviously there was water getting in the bags. Um, they used HID connectors for the quick disconnect, which is fine, but the wire on HID connectors is really thin. And then we would go with a large, much larger gauge, but no problem. Then the other disturbing part is you're an authorized Hertz dealer, which means you have access to the entire line. They didn't use the weatherproof Hertz speakers. The SPL show 
Neos or they're weatherproof. So you don't have to take my word for it. You can go on Hertz's website. And then when you go in the drop down menu, select Power Sports because it is a motorcycle. Then click on 6x9 and see how many options they give you. Hertz makes like eight different 6 mines, but there's only one that's weatherproof and made to go on a motorcycle. And that's the Hertz 690 Neo. So they use the Malay Pro 6 mine, which is not weatherproof. And that's why the customer had to swap 6 mines twice because water was getting in the voice call and destroying the 6 mine. In the front, they used SPL shell, paper cone, not the Neo. The issue with that is the speaker doesn't have a tweeter in it. So the correct speaker to use in the front is the SX165 Neo because it has a tweeter. So now the bike has tweeters in the back and no tweeters in the front. So of course it's not gonna sound right. So we went over the build. We were gonna have to replace the power wire, speaker wires, RCAs. We were gonna have to install a T-harness for the DSP. We were gonna have to put a new fuse holder in. We weren't gonna be able to use the rear six mines because they're not waterproof. So we would have to upgrade those to the 690 Neos. The front speakers don't have a tweeter, so we're gonna to have to upgrade those to the SX165. So the only thing we're gonna be able to reuse is the amp and the DSP. By the time you add our labor, it came out to the same price to just go with an NVS Audio Stage 2, which is the six mine speakers, fairing speakers. And so we just removed everything so he can try and get a full refund from the other shop and went with our full stage. That way we were able to give him a more powerful amp because he was running a 400 watt amp. We're now running an 800 watt amp. And I know that's the amount of speaker power that these speakers like. So uh, we documented the entire install and then we'll show you exactly what we did and why we did it. So now we have a uh, PVC amplifier mount, waterproof amplifier mount that we're able to mount down without drilling any holes. We securely mounted the 800.4 to the rack. We securely mounted the DSP to the speaker pod. We ran all oxygen-free power and ground wire, RCAs. The bike also was not flashed. So at anything past half volume, the amplifier would just shut off. And if you if they were using a Rockford amplifier, if you go on Rockford's website, it tells you 14 and up Harley Davidson, you have to flash the radio. So if you're going to use the Rockford product, at least install it the way they tell you to install it and flash the radio. So um, we went ahead, replaced everything, upgraded everything. We repaired all the factory harnesses, so everything is back to factory. It's plug and play now. Uh, we soldered everything back together. Now the bike sounds tremendous, and he's getting no more water in the bags. We used the proper American Hard Bag 5x7 to 6 mine adapters. So now the speaker sits beautifully in the lid. There's no... You can't, when you open the lid and you look from the bottom to the top, there's no sunlight getting through. So there's not gonna be any water getting through. We upgraded the wiring, speaker wiring, and we use XT60 connectors, which flow a lot more current and they're 100% weatherproof. No chance of water getting in the connections and the bags are serviceable. Everything is as it should. We removed the gas tank and ran all the power and speaker wires down the backbone, replaced the backbone cover and reinstalled the gas tank. So you don't have to worry about the wires burning on the engine when the engine gets hot. It's uh, just take a little bit of time, take a little pride in your work, and you'll have a returning client for life, hopefully. So uh, check out what we did on this build. Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. We have a brand new street glide in for a wiring rescue. It sucks because the bike's brand new. The shop that did the work, he's been back to the shop three or four times. They haven't been able to make it right, so he just gave up, and he's having us fix it. So let me show you why I'm super disappointed. As you can see, the bike is brand, brand new. So they used all really good equipment, so we'll start in the back. So Hertz makes a weatherproof 6x9. This is not it. This is the car speaker. This is Malay Pro line, which we use, but this speaker is designed for a car, not a motorcycle. It's not waterproof. And you can already see how there's water coming into the bag, leaking past the screws. So, oh wow. 
they used the speed clip to try and hold that in place. And they use connectors, and I'm gonna show you on the other side how that connector's falling off. Duct tape to try and hold the wire inside the tether. That connector's already falling off. See how easy that was? So if you're gonna use these connectors, at least use the ones that lock into that little hole. You can get them on Amazon, but, um. These are the wrong six spines. You're supposed to use the SPL shows and these have a really heavy magnet so it adds weight to the lid. Wrong six spine. So now this is where the issue is. Rockford and Rockford. So my first issue is power wire and ground wire. They used both red and then they just taped it all the way down. So now uh, they jumped power since they didn't use a T-harness, they jump power for the DSP off the amplifier. That's why there's a yellow wire going in with the power wire. Okay. Uh, they use aluminum wire instead of oxygen-free copper. So the wire is aluminum. I'll prove it to you in a second. They cut the factory speaker harnesses. This is the pink and pink and black. If you notice, same colors here. So they actually cut it to send signal into the pods. They make a $20 plug for this. You don't have to cut it. And then even worse, it's a Rockford Fosgate DSP and a Rockford Fosgate amplifier. Rockford Fosgate makes a wiring kit that's oxygen-free copper, not cheap aluminum wire, that plugs into the factory head unit and plugs into the DSP and then send signal to the factory pod wires so you don't have to cut it. So now you have cheap aluminum wire cut and spliced into factory oxygen-free copper wire. They also make a mounting plate for the amp. So you don't have to run self-tapping screws into the frame. They make a mounting kit for the amp that comes with the T-harness for the DSP that also comes with the power and ground wires that literally plug into the amp and literally plug into the speaker pods. So they did all of this for nothing, chopped up the harness on a factory bike. When the parts are available, it was actually, you can see right there how the wire is CCA, which means it's aluminum, not copper. Now the radio also not flashed. So if you go on Rockford's website, they recommend, they insist that you flash the radio if you're using this combination. So the bike doesn't sound good because it's not flashed. Instead of using a bracket for the DSP, they use glue. So. All right, I'm gonna cut all this open. We're gonna repair the harness and I'm gonna literally show you the parts that make this a plug and play install on this bike so this bike came with factory five by sevens instead of ordering the american hard bag five by seven six line adapters they screwed and used dum dum to put this six line spacers in and then used self-tapping screws to hold it in place then since it wouldn't line up they installed the speed clip because there's nothing for the screw to screw into here because it was actually going to the cable assembly and you wouldn't be able to open the bag so that's wrong so we're gonna have to convert that and it's after all this, it still leaks water. But then the biggest problem is, is the car speaker. If you notice, there's no rubber boot to keep water from going in there. Because if you put in a rear deck in a car, you're not going to get water. This is a motorcycle speaker. The SPL show is weatherproof. And see the rubber gasket? So water cannot get into the voice coil. The clients replace those speakers twice because they keep getting water and I'm getting destroyed because it's not the right speaker. This is the proper speaker for this application. Made by the same company. Flip that speaker over. Same exact company. Both made by Hertz. That's the Malay Pro car line. And this is the SPL Show weatherproof motorcycle line. Okay, so here's where we have a major problem. So instead of running it in the backbone, they ran it around and over the motor and it actually started melting. And now it's fused, but the issue is this amplifier uses a 60 amp fuse.
and there's CCA wire, a copper clad aluminum. It's not uh, oxygen free copper. So, so it's sitting on top of the motor burning and the fuse would not have blown because this is supposed to have a 60 amp fuse. They put a 200 amp fuse. You don't have to take my word for it. Go on Rockford Fosgate's website and they'll tell you 60 amp fuse or 50 amp fuse. Not a 200. Holy crap. And they use the biggest fuse holder in the world for the skinniest wire possible. This is where we're running the wire, and we're so that way it's protected, not on top of the motor like that. Okay, here is the proper kit from Rockford Fosgate. It's Rockford Fosgate kit, Harley Davidson 14 and up. So no drilling required for easy installation. Securely mounts amplifier under the fairing. Complete plug and play wire harness. And it's element ready. So comes with a T harness. This is the amplifier mount. So it uses the factory screw holes to hold the amplifier in place in the fairing. This is the plug and play harness for the radio. Victor, plug this in. So this is how easy it is. Instead of chopping up and splicing the customer's harness like this, you unplug the factory radio harness, you plug the new harness in, flip it. You plug the radio harness back in. And now your DSP plugs in here, grab the DSP. So off the DSP, you plug into the input side of the amp, lift the amp up so we can see it. Clearly labeled amp input. This side goes to the output side of the amp. Put it down. Remote turn on. And then the plugs that are left go into the DSP. This is how easy it is. If you're not using a DSP, this plug goes through. P, we unplug that. If you are using a DSP, now it plugs directly into the DSP. See how nice and easy that was? Completely plug and play. No cutting, no splicing. That's the kit to correctly install this equipment on the bike. So there's the disaster of wiring that we removed, the giant 200 amp fuse for 60 amp wiring. Uh, they lost one of his factory Harley screws, so I replaced it with a Phillips head. And they used HID ballast connectors to make quick disconnects. We're upgrading to oxygen-free copper wire in tech flex protected and ran inside the backbone. So mini A L fuse, waterproof fuse holder. PV's installing the waterproof PVC amp mounting plate using quarter 20 hardware. Goes right into the factory bolts on the factory amp tray. Sound digital amp, HKI Mini DSP, T harness, so none of the factory wires are cut, and we've already repaired his factory harnesses. Factory plug is soldered back together. Now we'll just test the tape it, and this will plug into the factory part right here. All plug and play, no cutting and splicing. So you can see the factory harness has been repaired. Okay, so we removed their spacer, which was just filled with glue. Yes, just a little bit around it. Now these are the proper adapters that converts that five by seven hole to a six by nine. You see how it sits perfectly because it's designed for these lids. 
the holes match up perfectly. If you see through there, the holes all match up perfectly because this converts the factory five by seven hole to a six by nine. This does not. Installs perfect, ready to go home. DSP is mounted, T harness, plug and play, factory harness repaired. Factory harness repaired. Solid install. Quick disconnects on the bags. XT60s, 100% waterproof. Five by seven to six mile adapter. Gasket in between. Wire soldered. Neat wire on. Gasket tape at the joint. And the radio's flashed. Nice and simple. It's all you wanted from the beginning, right? Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos.